The battle between gold and stocks is finally here. Joining me is David Barris, founder and CEO of Exile Capital, and Alex Mashinsky, CEO of Celsius Network, here to have this debate today. Gentlemen, I'm so honored to finally speak with both of you at the same time. Welcome back to Kitco. Great to be here. Thanks, David. And David. Yeah. Uh, David, we spoke not too long ago. Let's follow up on your thoughts. You were telling me last time, about two weeks ago, that risks to the stocks are still skewed to the upside. Now, you were talking more long term. We have seen a bit of a sell off in the last couple of days. Where can stocks go from here? Well, look, what was going on with the stock market over the course of the last few weeks and, and the month of August entirely was a little unprecedented. Uh, clearly, things like Apple doubling its market cap in such a short period of time was kind of outrageous. But that being said, uh, the only outlook, the only place for folks to go is, in my opinion, stocks for the long term. And, and there are good stocks and there are bad stocks. And what we're trying to do at, out, at X out is to try and uh, differentiate yeah. between those good and bad and, and focus you all on just excluding the losers. That's what we're looking to do. And I still think that is the approach one should take with this market even today. You wouldn't be overweight. You wouldn't be overweight gold now, would you? I would never be overweight gold. Alex, I know you're yearning to respond to that comment. What, what would you say to David? So first, uh, two uh, things about David. One, uh, I know him for a very long time. And second, uh, he managed much more money than I did. So I got to give him credit on that. But the, uh, this is not like any other situation. Over the last 50 years, anytime you basically bought the dip, you did exceptionally well. The question is, is this just another one of those scenarios? And does the Fed have unlimited power or printing more money in the last six months than in the last 100 years does change the equation. That's really what we're talking about. So the way I see the market is that the Fed created, put a net under the market, right? The net is made out of $4 trillion of, of few newly freshly printed dollars. The problem is that that net only catches the very, very large companies, the, the ones that are investment grade, investment quality. That's what the Fed is going to be buying, the debt that it's gonna be buying, or it has the companies like Apple and Google and others who can take care of themselves. So what that leaves behind is all those businesses that are probably gonna suffer or go out of business, which gonna create tremendous amount of pain, bankruptcies, and probably another bailout of the US banking system. So if you think that printing money and all the stuff I just talked about is nothing to worry about, then you should put most of your money in stocks. But if you think that uh, this is a different scenario and you need to buy more insurance, the two items that I think are the best way for non-correlated insurance policy are Bitcoin and gold. Okay. Now, David, I know your strategy for Exile Capital, just to recap for the viewers who haven't seen our last segment together, you want to take out the underperforming companies and uh, that in itself should outperform the index. Actually, the XL fund has outperformed the S&P 500 index. Now, Alex's strategy, from what I understand, Alex, is to hedge his bets with safe haven assets like gold. Why wouldn't you take the same approach? As, as Alex? Yeah. yeah. Look, I've known, I've known him for a long time, and uh, thank you very much, Alex, for the kind words. Uh, there's a reason I've managed a lot more money than him. He sometimes doesn't make the right decisions. And so in this particular case, I would say um, if you're trying to create wealth for the long term, which every one of your viewers should be focused on, stop trading daily, stop thinking about the moment, think long term to build net worth. And the only way you can do that is to invest for the long term. And investing in gold, uh, which is your question, uh, it is not going to is is going to be a wealth preservation tactic, not necessarily a wealth creation tactic. Bitcoin's a different story, and I think Alec has a very very interesting, novel, and uh, way ahead of the curve approach on on the crypto marketplace. 
which has a far different, I think, outcome than than gold. But if we're if we're responding to your question specifically, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's just not the same and it's not a same analysis at all. Uh, David, let's follow up on that. What is the difference between wealth preservation and wealth creation? I think some people might argue that in today's environment where we have so much uncertainty from COVID, from the Federal Reserve, um, from stock markets being trading at, uh, some people think they're not really supposed to be this high. Wealth preservation is more important than creation. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? Hey, look, I, I think over the long term, you you can't have, well, you can, you can try to have your cake and eat it too. But if if you're not willing to take any kind of risk, then it's going to be really hard to create wealth. You can preserve the wealth you've created, but I, I think you have to take risk. And, and wealth preservation for folks today, uh, whether it be in, in some type of uh, gold or gold-like uh, commodity, your only other alternative is cash. And you might preserve your wealth, but you're certainly not going to get a return on your wealth doing that kind of strategy today. So okay. I think you have to take okay, a risk. Alex, it sounds like uh, it sounds like David has a little more risk on sentiment than yourself. Where do you stand on this topic? What's your personal risk sentiment right now? Well, look, first of all, I, I don't think you need to be 100 percent in gold and Bitcoin. I mean, I think you some allocation to stocks is fine. And XAOT yeah. is a great uh, tool to get there. Uh, the question is how much for, for each individual. The decision is different because you have to look at, OK, how much income are you generating? How much real estate do you have? How much in stocks or retirement accounts do you have? And all those things influence how much non-correlated assets you need. So the, the decision is very specific to each person. My, my point is, is that a, you may have an account with millions of dollars in it worth of this or that stock, but the value of the dollar is going to decrease dramatically. So what you're really going to hold, even compared to gold, is actually going to be a fraction. So today... We, I think we all agree that we actually have uh, real negative rates, not zero. And gold competes very well against negative rates. No, gold really competes against interest rates. So when, when rates are negative, uh, staying in gold is better than staying in cash, right? So I would argue that all that portion that David talks about allocating in cash, you should actually be holding in, uh, in these precious metals. Bitcoin gives you that non-correlated return. And it's, again, the insurance against uh, uh, the Armageddon that I'm talking about, where, again, our, our economy does not recover. It does not go to all-time highs. And us printing much more money, again, the Fed is going to have to print another 3 to $4 trillion just to keep the music going on. Because as, we, as it takes longer and longer to come out of the uh, coronavirus situation and the economy is not going to just take over uh, the next day, they're going to have to fill the gap. And that's three to four trillion dollars right there. All right, let's get straight to it then, Alex. Do you think stocks will outperform gold by the end of the year? There are two outcomes. One outcome is that David is right and uh, stocks do outperform. Uh, the other outcome is that risk comes back. The VIX telling you that there is something going on. The VIX keeps increasing, even though we're hitting all time highs. That is not what's supposed to be happening. And for that, every time the VIX goes up, you need to buy more insurance. And I would buy, again, if it's a 20 or 30 allocate, percent allocation to non-correlated asset, I would buy half of it in gold to preserve that dry powder in case the stock market does drop again and you get to, to re-enter it with XAUT at half the price or Bitcoin that gives you that 10, 100x return in case uh, Bitcoin is just continues to be Bitcoin. David, what are your top investment picks right now? I know what you don't like. You don't like uh, Coca-Cola, for example. You don't like uh, uh, some of these large cap value stocks that you talked to me about last time that you think aren't, you know, aren't really meeting your growth expectations. But what do you like right now as investments? So uh, I like X out, David. And, and the reason why I like X out is because I think it's really hard to pick winners. And, and those who do it and do it successfully have to do it consistently. And I just think that's too hard to do. It's unfair for your viewers to believe that they can constantly pick winners, time the market right, and sell those winners at the right time, and always outperform the market. 
For me, it's so much easier to just exclude the losers. So I'll talk to you all day long about what I don't like and why I don't like it. And I'll never talk to you about what I like because it's too hard. I'll be wrong. And then you'll call me back on your show in three months and say, you see, you picked this winner and look what happened. So I'm not going to set myself up for that fall. I'd rather just tell you to buy crypto like Alex says. Yeah. All right. Alex, I know what you like. You like Bitcoin. You like gold. What do you not like, then, since we're talking about the topic of things to take out of your portfolio? What do you not like, Alex? Well, I don't think anyone should be holding bonds these days, not corporate bonds, not government bonds. I think uh, that's like picking a penny in front of a steamroller. There's nothing left there, just risk. And uh, if you want to de-risk your portfolio, then don't buy bonds, right? And you should take all that money and reallocate it to assets that give you protection because uh, you're not getting any income there, right? You, you're just getting risk. So I think that is an easy decision for most people. Well, they've lived with bonds for the, la- for the rest of their lives, right? So it's very hard for most people to follow my advice. Again, not investment advice, but just my opinion. Uh, but really, the question is, it's not zero or 100. It's just a question of allocations. And if you believe that this is uh, not normal times, you believe that the Fed does not have unlimited power, uh, you believe that the U.S. dollar, uh, which, by the way, already lost 93% of its value since 1970 against the gold, right, against the gold standard, uh, will continue to lose its value. And it can lose another 90%, you know, as we've seen from every fiat currency that predated the dollar. I have one last question for the both of you. I, I love speaking to the both of you because you're not just investors, but you're also entrepreneurs in your own right. So, Alex, you've you know, you founded Celsius Network, Alex, you're found, uh, David, you're founder of Exile Capital. Now, you're looking around at the, inle- the investment landscape right now. Take a look at the startup landscape. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs who are launching their own business in today's environment? What, what kinds of growth opportunities should they be looking for? Let's start with you, Alex. Sure. Look, uh, there has never been a better time to start a new business. I know it sounds ridiculous considering Corona and the recession that we're in, but uh, uh, basically most investors out there have already decided to bifurcate the market. Anything that moves uh, atoms, right? So anything that has to do with real goods uh, basically got discarded and anything to do with the digital economy uh, is going to get all the money. So there's two, three, two or three times more money now going to new businesses that focus on reinventing the digital economy, right? And we've seen the crazy valuation that Zoom and other companies are getting just because they're in the right place at the right time. So if you are contemplating a new business, um, you know, this is a great time to rethink that, launch something that advances uh, digital adoption, advances, or take advantage of that to get more and more uh, users to get what they need in a digital form, and you will be able to raise all the money you need for that. So that's really my uh, best advice. You you do have to come up with an original idea, and you do have to put assemble an amazing team, uh, but that's never been a better opportunity to do that. David, what do you think? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell your viewers, I, I agree with what Alex just said, but I'd also add the simple rule of the triple P's, PPP. You need, you need passion. Whatever that idea is, you better be passionate about it, and you have to convince others that your passion is is somewhat um, capable of, of helping others understand why this idea makes so much sense. You need persistence because while it might be a great time to get into a new business right now, it's hard to, to start a business and, and get supporters and backers for it, and you have to just keep being persistent. You're going to hear no a lot more than you're going to hear yes. And that shouldn't be a reason to give up. And then the last thing is obviously patience because it takes more time. It will probably cost a little bit more money than what you think before you get to that so-called break-even point or crossover point. But those three simple rules, everyone should remember them, think about them all the time, and then go for it because the reward of the success of, of achieving your own business idea is there's nothing like it. Maybe, maybe something might be just as good, but I don't want to talk about that on air. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the PPP loan, that all you need yeah, is yeah. a PPP loan. You know? Some people are using that for their, for their own startup ideas, <laughs> but that's not, they've been punished for that. 
Yeah, and, da and David, Celsius is my eighth company, so I've done this uh, uh, eight times in a row, so uh, as a startup uh, founder. There you go. So yeah, I mean, definitely... Once you've, once you've been able to adopt those triple Ps, you could be like Alex, you could be a repeater, and repeaters, obviously, it becomes a little bit easier the second, third, fourth, and then eighth time because people have a track record that uh, can be relied upon for continued success. And we passion is... Have we actually have two minutes left. So have you guys ever shared ideas for, I guess, new businesses or new ideas? What, what are some of the things you've talked to each other about? Well, David, David was nice enough to share XAT with me when he was still thinking about it. And uh, I loved it. I told him this is amazing. It's so simple, right? It's so simple that you go and like, wait a second. <laughs> it, how come no one has thought about that? Like David said, it's much easier to figure out who the losers are than who the winners are. Mm -hmm. And in Alex's case, I was one of his um, uh, test, uh, I would say, test customers for his limo res business, which was a, pre a, a precursor to, to Uber. So he was way ahead of the curve in terms of coming up with, a, with an application to be used to, to hire and, and secure uh, a safe driver to get you from point A to B. And I became the guinea pig. I got, I got taken around from point A to point B. And yeah. uh, and fell in love with his business as a result of it. And that was years before U people even heard the word Uber. I just didn't have that, fourteen that, that, billion dollars worth of uh, PPP money to to burn. So yeah, Alex Mashinsky and David Barris, I uh, thank want to thank you both for coming on the show today. I want to have you both on again and talk about a lot of different things. So uh, thank you for your time today. We'll speak to you again soon. Thanks, Look forward David. to doing it again, David. Thank you. And thank you for watching Kiko News. Stay tuned. I'm David Lin.